Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dinosaur Channel. This is your home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. Today we're going to be covering the awesome Hadrosaurus duck build, the beautiful dinosaur, the Corythosaurus. Before we do, I want to before we do, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video because we're covering all the dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures from the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movie franchise series. As well, leave us a dinosaur-sized thumbs up, comment down below a dinosaur you would like to see us cover in the future, and let's cover everything about this duck-billed, super weirdly crested dinosaur, the Corythosaurus. So what does Corythosaurus mean? Corythosaurus means lizard helmet. Helmet, helmet lizard. A, a lizard with a helmet. That's what Corythosaurus means. Because it had a sort of helmet-like crest on its head and it wasn't a lizard because we just add a source to everything because that's what we do in paleontology. Where and when did the Corythosaurus live? Well, it lived about 77 to 75 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. And all the fossils from it were found in the North America area, mostly Canada. So this thing was probably roaming around with other dinosaurs that we know and love from the good old USA and Canada. And what did the Corythosaurus look like? Well, this was a strange looking dinosaur. It definitely was one of the stranger dinosaurs from the Hadrosaur family. It was a Hadrosaur, like I mentioned before. Those are the duck-billed dinosaurs that you know and love, like the Parasaurolophus. But it was also thought to be a Lambiosaurid related to the Neponosaurus, Velophorons, and Hypacrosaurus, and even the Allura Titan. The length of it was about 30 feet and it probably weighed something about three to four tons. And obviously the most famous thing about this dinosaur was its skull, similar to the Parasaurolophus that has that giant horn sticking out of the back of its head. The Corythosaurus had a giant skull crest on the top of its head and people estimate that it might have had a similar sort of usage to the Parasaurolophus. It had an elaborate bony crest on its skull and the crest of the Corythosaurus really resembled that of a cassowary. The crest function once again is highly debated, not a lot of people know, but science to speculate that the Corythosaurus could have made loud, low-pitched noises to warn other Corythosauruses of danger or maybe even communicate with them and let them know that they're in the mood for a good plant or a snack and they maybe just want a pack of juice or something. That's what happens when you're a Corythosaurus. You just gotta go, and you gotta get attention of your friend and be like, hey man, I want some juice. And when I say juice, I mean ferns. That's a bad joke, huh? Corythosaurus started developing its crest when half the size of an adult, and this is based all on skulls that we found of Corythosauruses when they were babies, younger Corythosauruses, and uh, they look really cute, if I'm being completely honest. So how did the Corythosaurus get famous? Well, it never really did. It's just not one of those famous dinosaurs. Unlike the T-Rex, or the Velociraptor, or the Triceratops, this dinosaur never had its social media takeoff. There was no one ever snapping Instagram pictures saying, oh my god, I just met my biggest celebrity idol, the Corythosaurus. It's just one of those dinosaurs that never really took off. This dinosaur has always kind of been in the backlight, but it did have its shining moment in a Jurassic Park movie. In Jurassic Park 3, it got about 30 seconds of screen time in the middle of a stampede where it was mixed in with other dinosaurs like the Parasaurolophus and the Velociraptor in a bit of a stampede. And it's actually seen and looks really, really cool. In my opinion, the stampede of the Corythosaurus and Parasaurolophus is probably one of the best CGI moments in all of Jurassic Park series. I'm talking everything from Jurassic World to Fallen Kingdom, all the way back to the first Jurassic Park. That stampede scene always gets me. It's one of those things that just looks absolutely incredible in my opinion. And that's pretty much the only mentions that it's ever gotten in media. It's as well been featured in the beautiful Jurassic World Evolution video game where it's seen very similar looking to its Jurassic Park 3 counterpart. It's an amazing dinosaur. It looks awesome in that game and I love putting it in the different parks and maps that I build. Let's break down the diet and behavior of the Corythosaurus before we finish out here. The beak of the Corythosaurus was shallow and delicate and must have had been used to feed on different types of vegetation, being a very selective feeder. It probably only ate the juiciest and the youngest plants in the bunch that it was able to find. And we know this by specimens of Corythosaurus that have been found with different plant matter in their stomachs. It was found with conifer needles, seeds, twigs, and fruits, which meant that the Corythosaurus probably had a varied diet with a bunch of different things, but being very selective about what kind of things it ate. Other than that, it had zero defenses. It was a pretty large dinosaur, but not any larger than probably most predators that were hanging out in that area. And if it was like a pack of some really fast dromaeosaurids that were going to attack this thing and just claw it out and eat all its guts, this thing really couldn't do much. It protected itself by hurting in numbers most likely, or maybe even hurting next to bigger dinosaurs like sauropods. 
But other than that, it had no natural defenses that we know of. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Karithosaurus. This dinosaur is absolutely incredible. I love it. Honestly, one of my favorites. I love Hadrosaurs, and the Karithosaurus is just an awesome one to add into that mix. I highly suggest looking for them in the Museum of Natural History in New York. If you're ever out there, you can see some beautiful depictions of them there. And uh, the Karithosaurus ones that they have there are just incredible. Since this is the end, I want to remind you guys to subscribe with those notifications turned on so you don't miss a single dinosaur quick dive that we do on this channel. We're covering all the dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures from the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park movie franchise series, so you don't want to miss a single one. Just turn on those notifications. Trust me, you're not going to miss it. As well, if you want to support this channel, you can by sending us some money in our PayPal down below in the description. If you want to send us some money, we'll happily accept it and we'll give you a dinosaur episode in return. As well, give us a dinosaur sized thumbs up and comment down below a dinosaur prehistoric creature you would like to see us cover in the future. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, goodbye.